So I now talk to students in school and I ask them, how many of you think you're going to live to be 100 years old? And practically every hand goes up. And I then take them through the steps. At 18, you'll graduate from high school. What are you going to do after that? Well, they tell me they're going to go to college maybe. All right, that's another four or five years. And by that time, you're about maybe 22, 23. What are you going to do after that? Well, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. Okay, that's going to be 40 years. Maybe you'll do that 35 years. So that time you're going to be 50. What are you going to do for the next 50 years? Because you're going to live to be 100. That's the question. I'm Herman Sias, native born in Los Angeles have two sisters and uh, we were raised out of the southeast area near the near Watts. I always liked politics so I thought uh, when I got into UCLA I said they actually have something called political science this is crazy and so I took it not knowing what it was graduated in political science but no government wanted to uh, or country wanted me to run it so I decided I'd go to law school and I graduated in um, law school in 59 and of course passed the bar the first time and was able to start practicing law in 1960. It was very tough, if not almost impossible, for a Mexican lawyer to get a job. I mean, the big firms weren't hiring them. So the Mexican lawyers basically started practice by themselves. They opened up their own office. And that's when I first got introduced to the start of the Chicano movement. And the Chicano movement was kind of a, it was really being led by the young kids in high school who were did not want to lose their identity. In 68, uh, the, lost, the students walked out of the, uh, the high schools uh, led by a teacher by the name of Sal Castro. 13 of them were indicted, and I just found myself then becoming a Chicano lawyer. So in 1970, uh, the Democratic Party decided that, uh, that for them to win the statewide elections, they needed to have a Latino or Mexican-American candidates. So that's how I got into politics in 1970 and then ran for office in 1974. Ran into Jerry Brown as we campaigned. He got elected governor and, uh, and then asked me to join his administration. Uh, and I had my choice of departments to take, but I decided I wanted DMV because that touched everybody. We diversified it so that women had a, an equal chance to become directors of, and managers of the department. Uh, we opened it up uh, to uh, all minorities and um, went out and recruited to get them to come into the department and we were very successful. And then, uh, you know, you start thinking about, well, I'm going to retire someday, you know, making the money from the law practice, I'm going to retire. and. The idea of retiring, though, meant that I wouldn't be practicing law, and I enjoy practicing law. I like the concept of helping people, and you're kind of a warrior for people in the court of justice. And, and then it hit me. You don't have to do one thing. You can do a lot of things. So I started selling paintings, and I decided to have a website. And uh, so I thought, wow, I got two things to do. I, got, uh, I can paint, and I can write, and uh, and still, you know, in practicing law. And the other thing I like to do is fish. And so there's this process that we have to continue to search within ourselves and explore the possibilities that are presented to us. And frankly, this is the best problem of my life. I'm getting to do what I like to do, feel I'm contributing, and taking care of all my creative juices. Um, it doesn't get any better than that.